Yo. Hey, man. <clears throat> you good? You, you, got, you got this? Huh? Uh, I don't use social media other than to see what other people are posting, so. Well, the, I, the, don't, don't all your, uh, your students give you uh, uh, a crash course in how they can uh, uh, submit their, their assignments via social media? Uh, they, they might prefer that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have had a couple of assignments come in that are all like lowercase typing and you know all the like texting vernacular. I'm like I don't know you, what any of this means, man. I'm sorry. I uh, I know what most of it is. I don't think I know all of it. They, uh, but you, I, you I, have. You have some really good. You have some really really good uh, stories of of what they uh, how these students try to get over on you. Oh, do, do we want to start with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me, give, so 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 give me uh, give me give me a couple good ones. Haven't I been part of some of these potential uh, uh, angles that they've done? Yeah, I mean, uh, you're in a couple of exam questions for yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but like, uh, I haven't used you as any of the like joke ones, but I've done the, uh, you know, according to Charlie Weingroff, and then there's exclamation marks. Yeah, yeah. You know, the FMS is, you know, can people get into positions to absorb and adapt to stress? Like, it's the Charlie <laughs> Weingroff quote. Right? No, no, I want, I want the good, I want the good stuff. I want, I want like, uh, oh, you know, so... I want, I want the stuff that's like, uh, the, that makes the dog eat your homework sound like nothing. You know, I, I don't get too many of those ones. Um, but I get the, like in an exam, the, the one that still to this day blows my mind was, uh, place an order of increasing power output. Um, and it was like 100 meter dash. Oh no, it was vertical jump, 100 meter dash, 400 meters, and then like marathon. So the power output from explosive to long duration okay. was what the yeah. question was about. And of course, they're all randomized, and kid puts up his hand. He's like, so I go over, and so by increasing, do you mean from like smallest to largest or largest to smallest? Largest to smallest. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I, I was floored, and this was a kid who talked all semester, never paid attention, so I kind of lost it. And I was like, if you don't know the definition of increasing, you have bigger problems, my man. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like no. – uh, I remember uh, that, that level of question. Uh, so when I took the uh, – uh, so this is – I talked about this, I think, with um, – uh, I forget who it was, but in, in Canada, it's CAT. So, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. athletic therapy. Yeah, so in America, it's ATC. Very, very creative. I don't know which came first. Uh, it's called Certified Athletic Trainer. Uh, um, it, was, it was Ethan Chriswith, who's the um, – he's a director of, a, of an athletic training program in California, uh, which is actually ironic because California as a state doesn't recognize athletic trainers. <laughs> So, so they could just do whatever they want. They, they, could, they, they, don't, they don't need to be licensed. It, it's pretty interesting. And there, there's other states that treat different uh, uh, roles that way. And uh, so, so I remember on the exam, uh, so I took that exam in 1997. And I kid you not, uh, A, B, C, D, E, what, what are the four muscles of the rotator cuff? Now, that uh, that I don't I don't believe that should be a question. I, I think uh, uh, very very so at least that's for a a uh, uh, in its in its position a, a terminal level certification for yeah, athletic yeah, sure. training sure. athletic therapy. Uh, your class is not a terminal level uh, class. This is this is different. Uh, I don't believe that your question should be asked, <laughs> and, and I don't and I don't believe that you should have to name the four muscles of the rotator cuff. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, <laughs> that's supposed to be the gimme, right? Like, you know, let's start, let's start this off as question number one or number two, and okay, I'm, I'm in this, I, I, I got this, right? Like, thanks, Greg, have fun. You gave me a, you gave me a, you know, an easy one to start off with. No. <laughs> Tim, Tim I like, does, but, uh, he does some of that stuff too. He'll put some yeah, yeah. nonsense yeah, on yeah. there. That's well, uh, I, I always, I always do, or usually. 
I'll do some bonus stuff, right? Like, according to Ron Burgundy, the uvulus yeah. attaches to the like, <laughs> upper dorsimus. And one time, so this might not fly for you, but this would be a good story for Rhonda. So one year, uh, a student wrote, I don't watch hockey night in Canada. How would I know the answer to this? Yes. My reply to them was, you've got the wrong Ron. You're thinking of Ron McLean, who does the Don Cherry thing, Coach's Corner, not Ron Burgundy from Anchor <laughs> So, so but they how were you, living. If he didn't watch, hold on, if he didn't watch, how would he have known that? Well, it's, it's just the pop culture anatomy question, right? But, is, yeah, uh, yeah. Is Don Cherry still around? Oh, you're also talking to the wrong guy. I, I don't think so anymore. I, I, he gets he gets fired every couple of years for saying something crazy, and then they bring him back because he's very entertaining and knowledgeable. Amazing yeah, I how, mean, how that how that balance works. <laughs> he'd he'd be great in wrestling, I think. Yeah, probably so. Probably so. Yeah, I uh, I always tell my hockey story as I grew up in Edmonton, um, in the '80s, and so I got to watch, you know, Wayne Gretzky and. Paul Coffey and Mark Messier and the whole works. Um, yeah. And so I was spoiled for really good hockey as a kid. Um, and then the Oilers have been terrible ever since. And I stopped watching hockey when they got terrible and have never come back to it. So I, I have no, I have no idea. So the Oilers would have been good. Obviously they, they came right after the, the, the Islanders. Yeah, they had to beat and, them to to get yeah, to that. Yeah, they're yeah. They're like their they're like their Detroit Pistons. But then, for but the then Bulls. after uh, after Gretzky moved on, the Oilers were still good. It was yeah, just a I, couple. Messier became they, the number one guy instead of yeah, Gretzky. I think they lost maybe the next year, and then they won the year after. Um, yeah. So, but that's Gretzky still probably left. that might not even put you into the early nineties. That's still, no, it was, was that's still probably early long, 90s. Yeah, that's a long time. And I oh, don't, man. But I'm sure they've been good. Like, they, they, they probably have been good at some point in between. Yeah, they've had, a couple, they've had a couple runs. Um, yeah. But uh, the, I, I always joke, too, that they're the best farm team in the NHL because they're really good at player development and then trade them away or lose them to free oh, agency. So. Like, I... Like Ajax, like they just yeah, hundred uh, percent. If they if only sat. they would, if only they would take that model where they knew that that's what they were doing. Yeah, you know, they, they uh, yeah, because that's that's what that's what they do. They yeah. they get all these studs and then just sell, sell them, sell yeah. them, sell them. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. cool. So, so what's uh, how's the uh, how's this whole shutdown thing still going up there? It's uh. Yeah, you, so, obviously, a co college professor, you've got a uh, a another level that, that this impacts you. Yeah, so it was interesting in March when it all kind of happened. We uh, we were sort of bracing for the fact that we'd be pushed to an online delivery system. Um, but then, you know, the institution I work for sent an email out to students Friday at 4 o'clock, kind of saying no classes face-to-face um, -face anymore. We'll see you online on Monday morning. And so we had to make this like big pivot and shift to figure out how to deliver, especially in the health and exercise sciences, all of our practical courses. Um, so it was a hard stop. And then, you know, let's figure out how to teach with Zoom and all of the other stuff that goes along with that. We had the summer to, to sort some things out, but, you know, come September, we were back teaching online and you know the, the course I teach this semester is advanced functional anatomy which has a big lab component and usually there's running and jumping and throwing and those kinds of things that get analyzed but you know sitting in my basement or in my hmm. office trying to teach that stuff demonstrate that stuff's a little bit difficult um, how do you do that so, what, uh, so like what would what would be what would be the normal uh, uh, opportunity to, to teach it? So I guess everybody's in a lab or a gym, and then how how do you do it now? Yeah, so so last year the the class typically has about 120 students in it, um, and so we would meet for two 90 minute lecture periods um, in a traditional lecture hall, and then they would get um, a two hour lab where they would get to work with anatomical models. 
Um, so we don't have a cadaver lab for our students, um, just too cost prohibitive for 120 students to be in the cadaver lab. So, um, you know, th they would work with the sort of 3D scientific leg model and pull apart the, you know, hamstrings or quadriceps or remove the glute max and see what's below that and th those types of things. But then in the in the lectures, we would do kind of knee bone connected to thigh bone stuff because there's a bit of a gap between our sort of first year structural anatomy and then our functional anatomy. So we do a bunch of that stuff. Um, and then it would be kind of integration of, of muscle control and movement. So lots of joint coupling stuff, um, you know, plantar flexion with inversion and knee extension with plantar flexion and inversion and, you know, hip extension with external ration, external rotation and abduction. Um, and then we look at kind of functional movements, you know, running, throwing, jumping. Then as we moved on, we, we look at integration of sort of core pillar and providing stability um, sort of centrally so you can gain mobility um, peripherally and, and then we do stuff like what are the four rotator cuff muscles <laughs> but um another thing i robbed from you and, and you know i think i gave you credit for the the first time i did it but i still use it all yeah, the yeah. time is uh, you, join, join the club join the club yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you uh you did a podcast on strength coach podcast with anthony like years and years ago it was like number 60 something where you talked about a client that you visited and or visited you and, and did all this, um, you know, centration of the uh, humerus and the glenoid fossa um, using a distractive versus compressive approaches and provocative and non-provocative positions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this yeah, idea that was like that, a, a scheme, a scheme of, of things were really easy and then it became more demanding. I, I think yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. And so, you know, we, we built some pretty good discussions around you know maybe from a shoulder health perspective a deadlift is a really good position to put yourself in to start because you get that you know active control of the of the humerus versus here where that humeral head can just fall right out there's not a lot of passive or active um stabilizers in that joint to support that overhead movement um yeah it was um it was a non-provocative to provocative yeah it, and and uh or or no it went then there was a middle provocative I, yeah. I have to go back and look at this because it's interesting you bring it up because uh, in terms of giving me credit and then no further uh it, i don't make any money to pay you man there's no more than, uh, <laughs> more more well hell, i i just saw somebody uh use train eagles rehab and, and not even mention um i don't have to i don't know if, if i should pull out the uh United States trademark patent I have on that, but uh, um, anyway, that 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 shoulder article, uh, which was generated correctly from uh, from from a, a, a patient that Anthony Renna has sent to me, uh, uh, some people say that that's one of the like to this day one of the best things I've ever you know published, uh, and I go back and look at it. I look back at a lot of things, and they seem like yeah, I, I wrote that. I'd probably write it very differently now. But it was non-provocative, and then middle provocative, which was like eighty to one twenty, and Push then up. provocative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you had then you had static versus dynamic. Right. So now you ha you had at least six categories. And then uh, I actually looked at it because because the feedback even to this day is still not overwhelming, but it's still very positive. And, and that uh, some folks want that to be the next video product. And so I went, I went back and looked at it where you, the, the uh, things that were uh, fast or explosive, but then landed in a stable position, such as a push press or a snatch would mm -hmm. be, would be, would be more demanding than uh, something that, or uh, less demanding than something that was with constant repetitions. Right. Uh, and then and then to go from high to low. So like a pull up would be less demanding than a press. Yeah, it's it's a it's an exam question, man. Like the the pull up finishes you in that like non provocative position. Right, right. right. 
Yeah, yeah. And that's what makes it less demanding because you're right, going right. to a place of proprioceptive safety. I don't know the, the I don't know that that's accurate to say, but um, it, you're going well, think, to a, a, a more stable, inherently more stable position. Yeah. And I think it probably comes at that from like a neuromuscular perspective, but it's all, you know, we do it in anatomy because we can talk about joint capsule and glenoid labrum yeah. and um, you know, some of the ligaments and, and tendons. And then we can talk about active stability from the rotator cuff now being able to centrate that humeral head. Um, I don't, I don't remember ever having a class like that in undergrad. It definitely wasn't, it definitely wasn't undergrad. Undergrad, the big ones were two, two semesters. Cause I was pre-med the way like I could, you could be pre-med and exercise sports science. Like pre-med wasn't a major. Right. You'd have to be biology, chemistry, physics. You could actually probably be anything. But uh, the, those of us that were in the physical therapy track, we would pretty much take every. We, we'd be the same up to a certain point um, with the with all the w folks that wanted to go to medical school. So there was, uh, for me, it was second year. But <laughs> I only I, I only went to college for three years. I came out early, and so so the third. <laughs> Third, third year was, was anatomy. That was a 300 level course. But that was just like, put your head down and memorize, you know, sur it was basically sur surgery. You know, it was like, you had to learn every, every single, every single uh, anatomy structure. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm guessing the fall was structural anatomy. And then physiology was uh, 318. Uh, I remember this, you know, 317 and 318. But then through exercise sports science department, also 300 level courses, it was kinesiology. That was the title of the course. That was like, if you, so the pre, the, the pre-med folks wouldn't take that. That, that was, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if they thought that was beneath them, but it just, it was maybe a little bit more off the, off the path. And I remember the, like the exams were not, uh, what are the four rotator cuff muscles? You, you, you would get like a, a sequence. I remember this one like it was yesterday. It was a, a, a young lady doing like a pirouette. And, and so, so her foot was completely planar flexed. And, and somehow they show you that uh, they're, they're, she's spinning. And then the question would ask, uh, they, you would have to comment on, on, on one joint. And you'd have to say that the joint was moving in what plane? about what axis with, with name at least one prime mover and the innervation of that prime mover. And if you didn't answer all of, like you should, like you're nodding, you're nodding your head, you're, you're flexing your head uh, in the sagittal plane about a coronal axis, uh, primarily using double action of the sternocleidomastoid, which are innervated by, I'm not even gonna try, because that was always a hard one anyway. I want, it, it was the sternocleidomastoid cranial nerve? I don't even remember. All C5. trivia. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so that's, there uh, are there are some of my students on this thing. Maybe they can answer right now. They just finished yeah, yeah, their go exam. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> if you're if you're if you're one of Greg's students and you're watching and and we can see in the little uh, comments, um, I'll have uh, I'll have George send you something uh, from, uh, from from T from T equals R plus. So, what? Um, yeah. So. And and no end in sight or what? Does uh, I mean obviously your country is far more progressive than ours in the rules and the vaccines and blah blah blah. But uh, you know what? <clears throat> yeah. Everything is so, still going to be uh, online. Yeah. So when when we did some of our planning, we kept a lot of our lab heavy courses for the second semester, so January start. But we're still in lockdown online. So. My Christmas holiday is figuring out how to do exercise prescription um, and exercise physiology, which are heavy lab-based courses um, from the comfort of my basement again. Yeah. Um, so, so we'll deliver some probably video-based things again. Um, and then uh, it all depends on sort of vaccine and caseload, I think, before we're we're in the class. We'll we'll do some things. I think in September when we get back to to the next academic year where we we get in the lab. Um, so my my wife is a lab and simulation coordinator for the school of nursing here, and they're full steam ahead. So they have all their students in the lab every day, with PPE on, um, doing the skills because they're considered essential trainees. Um, so here in BC. Um, no lecture component is face-to-face, -face, 
but labs for nursing, medicine, um, physio, and OT, so rehabilitation medicine, um, they all happened, but every other program was pretty much just online. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I don't mean, I don't know where we're at. We were really good in the summertime here in the Okanagan. Um, really low case numbers, but kind of had a, a bit of a spike. So, um, you know, we're in a little bit more of a lockdown. The ski hill um, just this week reported 60 or 70 cases. Um, so they're all in panic mode because they don't want to have to shut the hill down. Oh, um, man. But the government's still saying, you know, out, outdoor activities with, you know, social distancing is is okay. So um, we'll see what happens there. All right, cool. Um, That's, uh, how about, uh, how, about uh, how, how is Ogopogo uh, affected by any of this? <laughs> no, nobody's seen that guy in a while, so <laughs> just laying so, low. So uh, uh, let, let's go back. So I, I think we, we like, like, like so many of us, we knew of each other and had some form of communication, but we met in person, whatever year it was. I'm not even going to bother because yeah, it's been 2012. Like, it was 2012. Well, oh, oh, yeah, because you know that was the first year of the. the I, I looked, I had to look it up though. <laughs> Uh, it, it gets to a point where that that's how you know you're getting old when when uh, not 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 anything other than you can't remember what year something specific happened because it happened so long ago and yeah, yeah. Uh, we I talked a little bit about Rhonda it was so, just so impressive how as the years went on you moved out of the gym and you got you were able to bring in some other people et cetera et cetera but uh, it was very very exciting that was at a point you know. I was going everywhere. I'm still obviously, you know, in a, in a lot of places, but I was very, very excited to come up there and not because of the beautiful picturesque uh, Okanagan mountains or, or whatever is there, not because of the wine, because I, uh, you know, whatever, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know much about that. Um, uh, but I was very, very excited to come to the home of one of, you know, maybe yeah. You know, there, there's only there's an A team of of crypto organisms, uh, <laughs> such as you know Bigfoot and yeah. and uh, chup, Chupacabra, and of course the what maybe the granddaddy of them all, the Loch Ness monster, uh, which could potentially be a still living plesiosaurus from uh, in whatever the it's the Okanagan Lake, right? Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, yeah. So so Ogopogo, yeah, yeah he lives in he Lake lives, Okanagan. Uh, yeah, Lake, Lake Okanagan, not Okanagan Lake. And I was so excited. And then, uh, however old I was at that time, I believe I'm pretty sure I would do it today, act like a eight year old, uh, uh, to be so excited to be in the in the in this region in this home of one of the most famous sea monsters in the history of our planet. And that's uh, you know, the, 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 there was that jungle gym I was playing on, right? There was yeah, in, in totally. the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I believe uh, so. So I, I think I did my opening. Uh, for the conference, be like, I'm so excited to be here, blah, blah, blah. And everybody's probably feeling this great warmth and, and how the uh, the arrogant American is, is so happy to be in their home. And then I lay it all on you that the reason I'm happy to be there was because this is the home of Ogopogo. Oh, yeah, man. When when you first found out, you were like, you didn't tell me. I probably would have done this for free. <laughs> 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 There's not a lot of there's not a there's not a lot of places that I really care about traveling, and it's easy for me to say because you know I've literally been everywhere except Antarctica. But um, what, so so and also too like when uh, when when we go to Europe to play friendly games or even if I have other work to do there, it, it's not often that it's in big cities. It's always like these second level cities because especially if we play games there they're trying to promote that national team. So we're not playing in like Zagreb in, in uh, Serbia. We're playing in like whatever little town, second sure. division, so that they can grow the game of basketball in these other places. But I have said that, and look, I've been to London a hundred times. It, it doesn't even feel like a foreign country to me. It feels like a, a cross between Toronto from the diversity and, and New York from the architecture. Uh, but what I'm getting at is that I would like very much to go to Scotland and I will pay whatever it costs for the most ridiculous, campy, like where they guarantee you see the Loch Ness Monster <laughs> before, before you go home and they deliver some little cardboard cutout 
uh, I think uh, the next time I come up to Okanagan, I would like to uh, be a part of such a uh, expedition where well, you are guaranteed, guaranteed <laughs> to see to see the the to see Ogo Pogo. Well, the next door neighbor has a a boat that you can sleep on. So instead <laughs> of putting you up in a hotel, we'll just anchor you out in the lake every night. <laughs> uh, that would. Uh, I was telling Allie, like, like for I don't know, I don't think she can get across, but I can, I can. Uh, provided I'm working and uh, and I could, uh, but I have to quarantine for 14 days, no matter right. what. Like it does, like everybody, you would have, everybody would have yeah. to. That's why you know our games in in uh, in November became uh, a little bit of a thing. But I would just go up. With, uh, I'll, I'll do 14 days. I'll go rent a house up there. That 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 won't suck. <laughs> so no. no, no, no. My 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 work is in Toronto, but I'm going to quarantine in the Okanagan, <laughs> and I'm going to fly back to. Uh, to, to work on day on day 15. I, I think that could happen. <laughs> yeah, it sounds perfect. Yeah, I mean, well, I count my blessings that I ended up here for sure. I mean, it's an amazing place to live. So, yeah. you know, it's like the Napa Valley of, of Canada. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that, uh, that, that seminar, you, you and Chris, I didn't remember Chris's name well for a couple seconds when I was talking to Rhonda because I think too fast. But you guys started that, that seminar, what, in 2012? Yeah, that was the and, first year. Uh, and then how many years did it go? I think we did six. Wow. Five, five or six we did. What, yeah. uh, what, what, what brought it to a stop? What happened? Uh, I guess it was fatigue from E and I. Um, mm. You know, it was a big, big effort. Usually started in January with maybe one or two kind of meetings a week and lots of emails looking for people to speak and I mean that that kind of perpetuated itself and got easier as the years went by because we had a good you know stock of people who had come through and could could vouch and say it was a good event um but yeah. uh, you know I think we tried to do things that sort of one level higher so you know we always have really good food and try to get the you know good venue we had the university um facilities help us out and um, some local fitness um, retailers help us out with some things down the road. and um, But, yeah, it was just kind of something that, that uh, never really made any money from. You know, Chris is the businessman, and, and I'm sure he wanted to make money from it. And I'm the prof. I've never seen money in my life. You know, I've always <laughs> been in debt. So, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it, it it opened huge doors for both of us and – um have some lifelong friends from it um but we just just kind of ran out of gas mm, um, but we i talk about I do, resurrecting it for sure well i do think um, you were a step ahead uh there there was uh it kind of had a feel which i guess i get i mean obviously there's the nsca you know in in canada uh but mm -hmm. but the the N, the nsca like state and regional conferences they it, they're like very small they they pay nothing um, there's, it's very rare that there's a name that would have drawing power. And that's just their model. I'm not saying it's good or bad. Uh, yeah. I think every, everybody should get a chance to, to do their thing if that's what they so choose. But that, that kind of like the venue, the location kind of was similar, but, but you had, you had some people that could draw and, and it, in a, in a part where, you know, you, you, you kind of, if you don't live there, you're, you're either coming to vacation and you brought people that got to see where you live, you know, it's, it's right, like right. This. When, when you live in that kind of place, I, I imagine there's some pride. And now people are, are not only coming, you know, for this product that you're selling them, uh, but they're also getting to see a part of the country or the world that they would not come because if you lived in like the Pacific Northwest, that's not a hard flight. You know, for the rest of the world, it's a very, very hard flight. Uh, yeah. I mean, you lived it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea. That was probably a triple because I don't remember. I mean, maybe it would. I don't remember. Well, but, uh, should should I share the story about you getting into which one? It's the which one, one about you getting into Canada. Well, that when when I came <laughs> to see you, I think that was the first time after I got flagged. Uh, yes. So and then I don't know if you guys talked to somebody, but it was oh, like I wrote, who, mate, I wrote a letter like and I walked it like over to them. Yeah, almost like they knew who I was. Now it, it is uh, that, that that uh the the I got flagged going into Winnipeg, and that was a that was a clusterfuck. Um, everybody everybody was on the hook. It was my fault. It was whoever else. It was everybody. 
and um, and I just didn't know the rules and and whatever. Uh, because at that time, I don't know, I don't remember if I was, I probably wasn't full time yet in, for Canada basketball because without a work permit, I could I could come and go for five days. That was well, uh, and, and, and and you could get paid. As long as yeah, we yeah. justified that you were the expert in the area yeah, that we were yeah. bringing in for a specific thing. So, I mean, I got it, it was yeah, it was like take door number one, go to jail. Door number two, you just go home. I'm like uh, door number two. So so then and then and then they were t- what, what kind of pissed me off was like basically that evening in Winnipeg. I stayed in Winnipeg, you know, because they they knew I wasn't a threat or they believed I wasn't a threat. So I got to still stay in the five star hotel. And after I was understanding this, I said, ma'am, the way I'm understanding this correctly, I can just kind of wait online again and, and, and enter the country or apply to enter the country. And she's like, yeah, it's up to the per-. I'm like, you put me through all this and I can just come and go the same way. You're just going to ask me a couple more questions, which in theory, you should be asking me anyway to protect your border. And I didn't get into it with her because I maybe would have gone to door number one. <laughs> So then the, the very, however long, it was probably a, a little bit of a gap in between when I came to see you uh, because I, I didn't have anything to do in, 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 uh, with basketball. And the, the, uh, when, I, when I went up, you know, I knew what I was supposed to say and, and don't say anything else and, and just stand there at attention, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, you're good. Here you go. And the dude smirked. Like he, it's almost like he knew. And then I smiled. And uh, that was um, – that, that, and then you guys were waiting there all smiling. And it's like, did you guys say, cause like no one, no one has the power to mess with the borders. Oh, no, those, camera, those guys are, those guys are no <laughs> joke. And it, and, and you'll see that I don't see, I can't really vision because I'm, I'm way more attentive when I come into Canada versus when I come home. So I, I, I'm sure it's the same, but in Canada, you have like grannies, like, like 78 year old ladies in full gear. You know, when you go to other countries, you can maybe tell there's some kind of law enforcement. But they got like in Italy, they got their their collar popped up. And like when you go to Canada and America, like this is not this this person has clearly a very intimidating uh, uh, uniform where they're wearing a vest. They got a full belt. They got you know, if you, if you know where to look, you can see where they have their their weapon around their foot. You know, they this is this is serious characters. But in Canada, you see like like a fat morgue beast, but he's all, he's all geared up. <laughs> there was one. Yeah. They, and the ones I remember are the ones that like, they, they, they ask the same question over and over and like, mm-hmm. they're not going to crack me. Uh, and it was, it, so, so this dude was like, I'm like, yeah, thank you, sir. And he goes like, and I'm like, what? but there's no, you can't, you can't touch them. Like there's no, you might've handed them something, but they're going to be like, thank you, sir. Like they're, they're not, <laughs> you, you got nothing on them. We'll, just, here, we'll just put that over there. Yeah, they're like monsters. Like they, they can't do anything. But My, um, but I, I can I can I can I can live in Canada at this point. Uh, whenever whenever I got my work permit, they they see my flag, and then a lot of times they ask me is like why why do you still have this? I'm like I don't know, sir. I, I, I submit to whatever well, your I yeah, lied. Whatever your process. Yeah, <laughs> I, I lied. Submit. We don't no, like they're, that. They're, they're they're like they they see that I've become and I've I've been approved. Yeah. Yeah like 30 times. Um, and then I'd say over the last couple of years, I just walk through, like, they don't, they don't bother me anymore. But then it could be like one time that they do. But with my, the, the, the work permit that I have, I could live in Canada. I'm allowed to, to live there right. and I'm allowed, I'm allowed to work, but I can only work for Canada basketball. Right. And, uh, and that's uh, if I, so if I were to come for a conference, my instructions from my attorney is, uh, I, I should not use my work permit. Don't even show it to them uh, unless they ask. Mm. And then you just, you know, like, like how I came to work for you, where I have this document and I hand it to them and, and uh, I'm a guest speaker and they, the, the, the document should say everything. And then, and then the, if they ask, are you doing anything related to your work permit? And then the answer is no, no unless, it, unless it's true. There was one trip where I did both in the same trip. And I just said, I said like, Sir, just so you're aware, but before I leave, I'm gonna use my work permit. They're like, "Oh yeah, it's fine. Don't worry." Like they, they, I think, I think they just want you to be honest. And uh, I, I and, think we're re- I think we're reasonable for the most part up here. Yeah, I think it's the same uh, coming the other way, as long as you just show respect. In uh, oh man, I was, got I got dinged in in Denver one time. It was really 
Yeah, I mean, it was chaos, and I was pretty early with the changeover, so I was, whatever, letting people go by and chit-chatting with everybody, and then I, I got up to the to the front with the take your shoes off, take your belt off, put your hands on the thing, <laughs> the, the x-ray thing goes around you. I stepped out, and there was the border services guy there, and I was like, wow, you guys take this way more seriously than we do in Canada. What, and, did, what, uh, what was what was your flag? What was your well? Nothing. I was just chatting to him, and and maybe I was the random guy that had to go in the the X-ray job, but then he, he just like snapped and he goes, "Yeah, I'm from New York, and there's two big holes where the the Trade Center buildings were standing." <laughs> I just went, "Oh, okay. don't you don't you think some of this might have something to do with that?" And he just went back room. <laughs> wow, that's uh. <laughs> I, I can't even think of how, the, because like when you go through the McDonald's security, you know, where these are McDonald's workers that are checking your bags and going through the millimeter or whatever, yeah, that's yeah. not the same. That's not the same as border control. Like that's, that's not customs. Those, well, I, those, I, those, that, I got I off, know. but, but I got off a plane from Canada in Denver. So I was probably going through border yeah. or whatever. Anyways, yeah, I, I, I got I got sent to to the back room for a conversation and a right. look look well, through my bag. So they can see. I had time. I had time. So I, I, uh, going into Germany, I think I was meeting a team. I uh, I don't even, I, whatever it was Germany. <clears throat> yes, I was because I was working for Perform Better in Germany, and then from there I was going to meet the team wherever they were. So I had the biggest Nike bag you could buy. And and I I didn't even bother like you I, didn't I, buy I just, it. No, I I no I don't I don't buy too much <laughs> Nike. Um, the the uh, membership has its privileges, and I'm wheeling it through, and he's staring me down. So I just look. I made eye contact because I knew because if you have a big bag like that, they think you're bringing like jeans or something into the country. So I didn't care. Like yeah uh, yeah like I just then you take a couple steps back and they're like here go go ahead like it was, but I never. Um, now, when we travel as a team, like that's that's interesting because, like, it, it's uh, I think I think all the stuff is like pre preset. You know, mm -hmm. and obviously you have the the national federation of the country we're playing, um, but that's um, that's uh, you know I can think uh, especially when we went to uh, China. Now nah, China, there was no joke. You had to do everything that you normally yeah. would, but in Australia, I'm like, dude, we don't have to do any of this stuff. And you know, they just just keep walking. Like, I'm, I'm not like, I'm not like, I'm, I'm thinking that to myself. I'm not saying anything. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but get, so, getting back to your uh, getting back to your course though, you um, you had you always had a big dinner, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That, always was, always I, a I big speakers dinner. Yeah, always. It was bar. It was barbecue. Oh yeah, the, oh, you you have one of the best stories of all time for for that. So we we had a. A dinner. We always put on a dinner on the Friday night, I guess. Memphis Blues Barbecue House. All mm. kinds of barbecue. And then uh, we were kind of milling around afterwards. And uh, that that time was Joel Jameson and, and Jeff Kubot and Sean Scan. And then Marty Gabala was also there that time. Yep. I think that I think yep. that's everybody. There was your token Canadian, and then uh, <laughs> and then we somebody was like, "Oh, it was Joel." I was like, "Let's go for ice cream." <laughs> and so <laughs> the the deal was, "Let's go for a blizzard." And what you guys weren't aware of was that one of the the people Absolutely. that were was working for Chris, the, her parents owned the Dairy Queen, so when we. <laughs> Walked into the Dairy Queen. She just walked into the back, and I think everybody's <laughs> jaw hit the floor. And it was like, you. Wait, you wait, went. Is... <laughs> can I what? get that one? Can I get that one? The, the big, What's... the big cup. Yeah, you were like, "Can I get my Blizzard in a thirty-two ounce cup?" <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, dude, "No." <laughs> dude, can I? I can tell you. I, I, I literally. Okay. I, again, I don't know the year. This, this one is going to be hard to believe that the last blizzard I think I had, no, I take it back. I had one with Allie, so that had to have been within the last four or five years in Providence before Perform Better. The one, but every other blizzard I've had that I can remember was in Canada. Because <laughs> I, I had one with Sam, Sam Gibbs, 
uh, who's you know if he's if he's having a bad day, he's six percent body fat at six five, and uh, you know six five two two fifteen. So uh, and he even had one, except he had the little baby one. Like, no, oh yeah, that doesn't what? count. That, that doesn't no, count. No, it's not even that big. It's like why are you even <laughs> buying that, dude? It's like it's a cheat day. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you're 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 cheating the Dairy Queen. Yeah, they, and, and, <laughs> but um, the, uh, the one the one right by Sky Dome. One day I took the the entire staff. There, it's within walking distance when we used to practice at the Air Canada Center in Toronto. So the the Raptors have their own practice facility now. They used to have their practice facility in the in the arena, and then we would use it when they weren't using it in the summer. So you could walk in in uh, down by the harbor. Toronto is is a beautiful city, and there's a Dairy Queen. So I took the staff there and, and bought, you know, I got rid of my Monopoly money, and and uh, you know, like so, yeah, you know, a, a Blizzard cost like one dollar there. So um, yeah, right. They they were they <laughs> they they were aware of you know, you could. So if there's three sizes of the blizzard, it's like small, medium, large. And then right above it, they put the cups for the soda. And the soda is, the small is the medium, the, yeah. the medium yeah. is the large, and then the large soda is like this bucket. <laughs> yeah, the and I 32 said, ounces. <laughs> could I, is it possible to get the blizzard in that thing? And they're like, oh yeah, it'll just be an extra 75 cents. May I get, may I get that please? <laughs> That's crazy. crazy. My and my favorite Josh, part of the oh go ahead go ahead. I remember Josh Ford got one as well. Josh Ford, I don't know. He's in how do, how do I say Gulf Gulf? I don't know. It, it's somewhere Guelph, in Gulf. Yes, yeah. And uh, that's the last I know of where he was. Uh, I think very highly of him. A little disappointed that I, I haven't kept touch, but he got one also. Uh, and every, everybody else got a regular uh, or, or one of the more standard sizes of the well, of the blizzards. Well, it was that time in Kelowna, Joel went first and he got the large whatever Oreo and then there was probably seven or eight of us who went next and then all of a sudden Joel was back in line for a second <laughs> one. He finished that whole thing before and, the last person got served. What did, he, what did he say? He's like, oh no, I have a twin. I have a twin brother. <laughs> yeah. oh, so, to, so to this day, to this day, you guys and Patrick, because when Patrick came here, he went for a eight scoop ice cream at one of the ice cream shops. Um, so you're all known by my kids as the ice cream guys. That's and then, you, right? And then my my uh, parents live in in Edmonton, and Cubos is just outside of Edmonton. So every time I, almost every time I go home to see my folks, Jeff and I get together, and we always get together at a Dairy Queen. So. Uh, um, I haven't been to a Dairy Queen in a in a in a good while. I try to think. I don't know. I don't know. I had I had some ice cream today though, if that's a believable statement. But it wasn't Dairy Queen. It was it was Ben and Jerry's, and I weighed it out, so I knew how many calories oh, it was going to be. Well, you when, can't do that. You, get, you can't do that. Well, when 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 you get when when you when when you know you're not going to meet your calories for the day, you know, you put the ice cream in there. It kind of hits fast forward on those little bars that go across on the chronometer. Mm. So it, 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 it worked. It worked. I won't. I won't uh, tell you how many calories I've been getting out of beer these days. So. Mm, that's uh, I, I don't know what is uh, I'm trying to think. What's the is there is there an, is there an indigenous beer to uh, to to Okanagan? Oh man, there's uh, the craft beer environment in BC has exploded in the last couple of years. So we have a development downtown now called the Brewers District, and there's probably five or six within a two block mm. walking distance and probably three or four more in, in town. And then the Vancouver craft brewery breweries are just off the chart. So um, mm. yeah, we've got a, a great little liquor store at the bottom of the hill and they made me a customized advent calendar. And yeah, if you, if you love beer, it's the place, another reason to come to the Okanagan. So. All, right, all right. That's good. We'll yeah. keep, there's the yeah, so so you're gonna you're gonna get sponsored by the uh, Okanagan Tourist District to to bring, bring uh, people from, from yeah, Instagram. Maybe, maybe someday, hopefully. What about we were, uh, that, that conference was sponsored by one of the local breweries. <laughs> so, oh, cool. But, uh, yeah. I don't remember if there was beer at the at the uh, at the barbecue or not. I don't remember. There, def there definitely was. That's why we I'm didn't sure make was, any right? money. <laughs> <laughs> what about the? Uh, 
What about the uh, the tourism section of a place that I know we have a lot of great stories from the the wonderful city of Sacramento, California? Yeah, you know, we, we we have to talk about Sacramento. Sac, Sac. Yeah, yeah. There's another amazing Charlie line that I use when I'm about to go into a into a meeting that I don't want to be in. As I'll go to a, the colleague, I'll just, Hey, Johnny, you got any tape? <laughs> what? I need to tape my mouth shut for this one. <laughs> Oh, man. So so there was a period of time, and, and I think all of our lives are much different where we can't do this. But we tried for like a couple years where I think what, what I would clearly say is happening right now, the, the seminars, the, the commercial seminars are just trash. And that's why part of why I don't go out and do it so much because I don't like mm -hmm. having to compete. I don't like having to compete with trash and uh, hot trash. And, and <laughs> uh, so what we, we were starting to see that and and we a group of us many you know whoever close people that were like we we got together to to contact an instructor that we would want to learn from right and we're like no no we don't care about your certification we don't care about your name of your brand we will pay you and we will make sure that you're the only one that makes money like you can control mm -hmm. like we would do you tell me how much it's going to cost and we're going to divide it out between everybody yeah, yeah. and and then plus you had you had a group of, of, of guys, and I don't remember if there was any girls. We basically had a group of friends. Not, you know, we, we probably didn't have any kind of family, you know, or kids or at that time, or it wasn't, it wasn't that much of a pinch um, as it would be today, you know, for most people, job, the type of jobs that we had, where we mm -hmm. would just kind of control the seminar. And, yeah, and totally. the, 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 the goal of that was, was then the instructor probably would not be as inhibited to communicate because he was represent he or she was representing him or herself and not this commercial brand. That part I really understand. But also, if you knew everybody in the room, people wouldn't be afraid to ask questions. Nobody would be afraid to feel stupid. Mm -hmm. And if anybody felt stupid, it might have been the instructor <laughs> this, uh, because – that turned into this ridiculous, you know, and, and I'll and I'll be careful to not, you know, say certain things because, you know, I don't think this individual beats his kids. He doesn't. He's not a he's not a thief, you know. But he was just awful. And and we had uh, ge we generated so many comedic stories from that two or three days. Aside from being in Sacramento, <clears throat> which is a very weird place. It's uh, the first I time like, I've I've seen like twenty fours on a car. <laughs> yeah, and and that that uh, that, I believe the car you're referring to is the one that almost ran me over uh, at, at the Good Mall. Okay, <laughs> so mall, yeah. sometimes when there there's certain towns that have different parts of town, you're like, oh no no, that that's the that's not the Good Mall. You got to go over there to the Good Mall. And and like this this was some kind of old looking Cadillac that had what uh, best described as beach balloons uh, for wheels. And, and, and it was like I rusting I had, and yeah, I had to like dive out of the way uh, from walking in, in the middle of the street. But uh, the, the, the um, I, I think, you know, be, because, you know, uh, uh, am I going to, am I, am I out of line by saying that in most situations I am vocal? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 didn't yeah. Even, I didn't even organize this, <clears throat> this one. I think Joel, no. Joel Jameson organized it. And, and I think, uh, the only two losers that were in the room were the people that he brought. Um, everybody else, like, you know, I remember, I remember oh, it was some real fun. To, so those to two, this... they, they, yeah, they, they tried to communicate in some way. And I think I'm like, and then I think the dude said like, that's all I'm going to say. And I'm like, thank God. <laughs> they, well, they were, they didn't belong in the room. It was to this day, like the smartest group of like physical performance people that I've ever met, you know, the volume of people that were there, the, the people that were in that room, like that's yeah, yeah. So, some the, of the best. The, uh, and, and my comment on the second day was like, let's just stay around the breakfast table all day <laughs> and just talk shop, you know? I, I, but, uh, I, I agree, obviously, the, the brain power <clears throat> and the accomplishments since then. I am just mo so, so emotional that of all those people, I think in some way, everybody still talks to everybody, uh, yeah. which, which is remarkable. I mean, in that room, you have probably, 
maybe not baseball, but every other professional sport, there's a term, you know, somebody, you know, held a terminal position. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you had, you had, you had, you had NFL, you had soccer, you had NBA with me and, and Dave and, and uh, you know, it was, yeah, you, you had NHL. I think you had Kevin Neal in there. You had yeah. kids, you yeah. had, you had, you had jazz and Ricky and Karen Veer. And um, it, it was, it was really, really good uh, to bring everybody together. And I think the, I think the, uh, the instructor was, he was concerned. He, he was, he, I, he was probably somebody because of the nature of the information, I'm not going to say what it is so that people mm -hmm. don't get an awareness um, because of the nature of that type of information and why probably we wanted it because it was, it's a little uh, off the reservation compared to how we typically think. And we were all very interested in seeing this other model of, 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 of whatever it is, medicine, medical, whatever. And and I think he he had he had he was probably used to being the star, yeah. when we didn't we didn't really care if he was a star. We wanted to learn, and um, it, it, it that he wouldn't answer questions. Well, he the, talk one of, craziness, craziness. One of the things about the lips people eating lipstick. <laughs> and shit. Uh, yeah, it went off the rails for sure. But one one of the things I remember, again, it, you know, quiet Charlie in the corner. I mean, your line was. I just want to learn what you do and figure out the systematic approach that you use so that I can figure out if I can put it into my system. Yeah. And his answer to that was like, well, I just have 30, 30, 35 years of clinical experience. And that's, yeah. No, I remember, I remember it opened the door a little exchanges. bit. He said, uh, he's <clears> like, <throat> um, well, you don't, you don't know what I know. And I'm like, Dude, you don't know what I know. You know, mm -hmm. like how about we share? Like we pay. Yeah, to be that's here. why we're here to find out what you know. Oh man, what a! Uh, I mean, I, uh, anyway. Um, but but uh, so so the first two days were just. Now it, it's probably a lot more fun to talk about it than all of us bucked up and and doubled up our rooms in in a hotel and we all stayed together and and we all hung out. So it's easier to to remember it that way. But the first two days were so awful. And and because I was choosing to be vocal and, and be somewhat of a, of the leader of our group in explaining what we wanted, I had enough. And mm -hmm. and I said, and I said to Dave Tenney, I said, dude, I'm not saying a word tomorrow. You got it. You you handle it. And uh, and I don't remember. I, I don't. I, I remember saying that to somebody. But uh, I and and uh, I I did not say one word the entire third day zero mm -hmm. and, and and uh i remember dave was like i didn't think it was possible <laughs> <laughs> well that is, yeah it was it was interesting that's that's I for wonder, sure i wonder what that character is still up uh you know he what he, he, what his operation is still like uh because yeah it, it, it was weird from the get-go because yeah i think he was he was describing but oh that was a good example he was an atc he was not yeah. a physical therapist. He was yeah. not a medical train. Um, and he didn't have a schedule. Like he would leave the course to go like treat somebody for 10 minutes and then come back or something. And we're yeah, like, yeah. how does this even work? Because and, in, in California, ATCs can do whatever they want. Well, and, and but, that uh, was part of the conversation too, was about how we build and how we made money. And, you know, then the other piece was we sat in that little back room and, and that was an amazing room, the library. There was every book you could ever imagine or want yeah, to read yeah. in there. But then he just sat on that stool that was raised up above everybody and he just like flipped pages and read what was on the page. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought, man, I, I did that on the flight down here. I don't need you to read me your notes. I mean, I guess that's that's the, so the it, professor in me, the teacher in me, but he, that was so strange. Tried he tried to acquiesce at one point and he had somebody take their shirt and shoes off and walk. It was me. It was you. Cause okay. I, so, I so, tore my ACL. And so uh, must've been it must've been it. So, so he, uh, he Oh, and uh, Mike he, ran from him with the, uh, fasciotomies. It was Mike. Yeah, it was Mike. And, uh, and he goes, <clears> he goes, <throat> he, 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 uh, I imagine it was rhetorical. <laughs> he asks the room, can you see it? Can you see it? And I said, it must have been day two, because day three, I didn't say a word. Day two, I said, I don't see a thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing to see. Like, I, I, like, teach me what I'm supposed to see, because it just looks like there's two dudes up there walking. And, yeah. and if, if I'm missing something, I, that's what I'm here to, to gain. Please show us 
what you uh, what you see and what you want us to see so we can become better at what we do. But he wasn't interested. He wasn't interested. Yeah, it was, it was unfortunate. But, but again, like, the message needs to be do those things. Just find the right instructor. You know, again, yeah, best, yeah. best thing that I've – one of the best things I've spent my money on but it had nothing to do with the content of that, that course. It had everything to do with the, the people in, in that room. And, and I think it, again, created some relationships and ability to learn down the road um, mm -hmm. in a better environment. So, you yeah. know, it's, it's a piece of advice I try to give the students all the time. You know, you're going to spend, I don't even know what a university education costs these days, but, you know, let's just say it's thousand dollars a course for easy money, you know, and you're going to take six courses a year, you know, maybe put a thousand dollars a year away for another kind of seminar thing and, and, and do that outside of, of the walls of the classroom, you know, pick your acronym and, and go, go learn it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but that's then, the, uh, the, the type of the type of situation that, that and we, we had done that a couple times with a core group and not not every single person always always went and then it just kind of kind of went by the wayside but that's the type of seminar or course or whatever that I would like to do mm -hmm. I, I don't I, I I the last time I did one and maybe I went not maybe I, I'm sure I did go in with a chip on my shoulder because I had already begun to not enjoy it because I think people continually look for me to teach them to become a bad physical therapist in two days. Well, you have a lot of other, you know, options to become a bad physical therapist with those acronyms. And um, I, I don't like, I think, you know, cause then I can't deliver what the customer wants because right. they don't, no, ma no matter how much I say or market or whatever, they still identify me. And I can go back to 2009 where I never ever did that. You might've thought I did, but I never did. Um, I, 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 I unfortunately feel like I empowered people to find these other things. But uh, so, so I feel like I can't deliver because now if it's a mixed room, I won't talk any therapy. I'll only mm -hmm. talk about tra training. And while some people enjoy that, there's other people that want me to teach them how to crack necks and, and do DNS and things like that. And I just won't do that. But but if 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 I had the opportunity, and I talked to Michael Maxwell, who's not far from from you up in yeah, that area, yeah. that um, if if there was a way to have like twelve people, fifteen people, and and there's no syllabus, there's no you know no schedule, it's just like I'll have every chip I have and and every PowerPoint I've ever done, and I'll just sit up there, turn the chair around, and sit. All right, what do you guys want to know? And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, one, one question, five hours later, you'll have the answer. And, and that way it's, it's, it's just, everybody can learn from each other. And, and uh, that, I think that was what we were trying to do, but it's, it's, it, I think it would just be exciting to me to, 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 to be one of those 15 people. And my role is not instructor versus student. It's just right, that right. I'm, I'm just, I just play a different role in this team where everybody you know, because that's really what what uh, I, I would be excited to do the stuff that now, we were trying to do. Now, is the the stuff that you would bring to that table still based on you know movement, sensory systems? I can't remember your other ones. Readiness, fitness, very little, or yeah, very very little of the big global <clears throat> things have I uh, are any different from from what I would say. Um, the 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 biggest challenge is that. I still refuse. Well, I take that back. Let me let me let me backtrack that. In in China or other countries where the rules are just there are no rules, uh, I've done it there where you teach non healthcare because they don't have healthcare people. Like they don't. It doesn't even exist in the same way that we have it in North America. But I will not in any way uh, uh, teach show or teach. Um, and I, there was a slide on in, in 2009, uh, no manual therapy, no directly intervening for pain and no medical diagnosis. So I don't even really think in terms of medical diagnosis. Like you could say like you have a torn anterior fibular ligament. I'll just say the top of your ankle hurts. It doesn't, uh, 
because while that may be a true on imaging, it may not be part, uh, as much of a part of the generation of, of symptoms to begin with. So I won't do that unless everybody in the room is healthcare. And then to do that, like you have to like verify it. And like, right. that's annoying. Like, like that, that's and now I'm getting petty where there is a very, very excellent uh, manual therapy course, series of courses in America. I have gone to three. I've gone to three of them. And every time you literally get a phone call from the guy, like the, the, the top name, like he owns the whole thing. He's like, are you a physical therapist? And uh, it's, it's like minutes after you register. Yeah. And, and, and like the second and third time I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm the same physical therapist when I went to your course in October, like, like it's so annoying. And so I, if I'm going to be annoyed by that, how dare I do that to somebody else? So well, I, I would probably, I, I would also suggest that's maybe why you don't see DNS doing that stuff anymore. Cause it's just human resource intensive, right? Like, I mean, I did the, I, think, I did I the DNS A, A, B, and C, but I needed letters from people saying, yeah, yeah. yeah this guy's legit, and yeah, he's yeah. not a healthcare provider, but... Yeah, I think in know. that group, though, there's there's some other reasons why they're not doing it, but, um, you know, because, yeah, even, because now the, 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 the folks that are physical, yeah. yeah, the folks that are physical therapists and chiropractors and, and medical doctors, et cetera, they're now they're not learning what we got to learn in, you know, 10, 12 years ago. It's, it's just yeah, not yeah. the same um, where like, they don't even know what that is. And then the instructors get all fussy when you ask them about it because they, 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 they want to keep, you know, they don't, they don't want to share the seat. It's like, Hey, shh, I'm in this club, but, but, but yeah. you can't, you can't be and that. That's really disappointing. Um, but uh, yeah, that, 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 what, what we try to do now, look, cause there was other probably times, that a core group got together and it worked out really well. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's always, it's easier to remember this Sacramento situation <laughs> because uh, of the, the, the cacophony of, uh, of, of just, man. I mean, yeah, there's it's... probably like, there's probably at least four or five other very, very <laughs> powerful anecdotes other than we... you getting run over by a car with 35 inch rims. We, we should have known right from the start. I mean, <laughs> we were we were at what, cheesecake or something like that and then i went to the bathroom and somebody else went to the bathroom and we came back and sat at the table and the, the waitress was like hey did you feel that earthquake and i was like i wonder why i was peeing all over the place i thought the I, beer was I, really I, strong I remember, yeah, yeah remember like yesterday we were we had a freaking earthquake and, and and i didn't i don't i don't remember feeling anything but clearly there was a there was an earthquake and that was, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I went the entire third day without saying a word. I said zero. I said nothing. And that, yeah, oh man. It's because it's it's right I had there. some tape. It's because I had some tape with me. <laughs> but, but all those, all those names, like we all probably still all talk to them in some, in some way. And that's, uh, yeah. That's really I think, cool. Like, you, I think the only guy that I haven't spoken to from that group is Blas. I think that's yeah, the only yeah. guy. So I, I wonder, everybody wonder else. what he's doing. Yeah, I wonder what he's doing. Yeah. I, we, we, we'll have to – I'm going to look him up on social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm look him up on social. Like, he'll, he'll just he'll, – here's Blas. Hey, Blas, what's up, man? <laughs> he puts that, that big giant smile on, man. He, Blas, Blas is one of those people where um, – Maybe the opposite of me, where where you cannot imagine him ever being angry. No, nicest guy I in the can, world. Yeah, I there, there's 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 people that that I very much uh, envy that like dude, there's no way they ever get mad. Like they they can't they can't get mad at anything. Uh, I am very easily irritated. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. So me too. Well, we we got in we got in all the uh, we got in all the the, the big hits, and uh, you can see. When when we talked briefly about what we were going to do, don't don't worry about physiology. It, it's uh, yeah, yeah. don't worry about that. Well, hey, hey man, I, is, I, uh, I do want to say the your the work you put in to understanding energy systems, training, impact from a team sport perspective over the last few years has been pretty impressive. Like I think you. you've got a really good handle on it. Um, you know, compared yeah, to our first conversations 
five years ago or whatever it was. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, uh, I, I definitely, um, you know, some, some people, they, they have no idea that I'm even a physical therapist because all they hear of me or they know is, is only in this, whether it goes all the way back to powerlifting or some of the things that uh, where, you know, I was, I was significantly influenced from Val um, and Asetikin to learn, to learn how Omega Wave really worked. So in order to do that, he was, he chose to share, you know, the models that he would champion, which of course are not the only models, but the ones right. that I think you're referring to. But then the other way people have no, they think I'm just a physical therapist and they have no idea that, uh, that I, I probably, you know, know a little bit about some of these other things. Well, uh, too. I think, but, I think it's the right it's the model. Link. It's well, the it's right the model in Canada link. basketball. Just everybody but, can do everything. Yeah, and that's uh, – um, I was talking with somebody today on Twitter about – he said he was approached uh, by an NBA uh, team he, in, as the conversation went on, and he says, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, he's been talking, like, how is it that, you know, what they do from a movement perspective doesn't translate to on the court? And I'm like, oh, like, you know, I probably made an emoji face, you know, because to me that's that is, that's that's – that's the five years that you're referring to. That's why mm -hmm. I, I didn't do it to win CrossFit, um, which I think is very possible, uh, you know, it, w with that model. Uh, but it was it was to help understand why certain things were happening, but not always happening. And and mm -hmm. the reason is is that um, I think the, the only the, the best way that the research describes it is neuro neuromuscular fatigue. Uh, it's not you're not like out of breath tired. It's it's this conglomeration of of what load does, and it's why you can do a move and your knee is solid. And even though the the mechan like the the biomechanics is is, is weak uh, or wrong, um, but then the next time you do the exact same thing, your knee blows out. Well, I'm 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 kind of suspect that the tissue quality or you know was was the problem because if it was the problem, how come it didn't blow out the first time? Did it did it right. automatically get weaker? All nonsense. Uh, but, but, um, but, but so this dude was saying, um, uh, I said, I, I, I hope you're talking to the right person. You know, I'm glad that they were, I'm glad that they contacted you and were trying to get better. He's like, yeah, but it was a director of, you know, high performance and, or whatever he said. And he, then they went on to explain as to how the coaching staff in the front office doesn't care what, what they do. And, and I'm like, well, that's because people don't have conversations and there's not this common link of, of understanding of everything. So I would never claim that my knowledge of physiology is, is, you know, at a level that, that of, of many others yourself uh, as one, but if we work together, I, I, I can turbocharge what you do because there's other things that, that everything link, links together. So that's, uh, that's cool. Um, um, yeah, I, everybody's got an expertise, but I still think that there's this like common level that people should be able to talk to, you mm -hmm. know, and yeah. I don't need to impress you with fancy words and big words and my brain power. Like that's not going to help anybody, you know, yeah, let's yeah. find that common level. Where I, solve the problem. I can tell you though, if you do want to get out of a conversation, start using really big words. Uh, and, 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 and use them normally as if they're like not big words because that's what I kind of do. And, and then all of a sudden the person gets real like, like oh, hey, you know what, time to go. We'll talk to you yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you know, you asked me at the start about some of the good student stories, but, um, you know, one, one of the, the best student evaluations that I have ever gotten um, and I don't, I don't I'll, I'll pull out a Charlie, like, I don't know what I did to offend the student, um, but the, <laughs> or how we didn't connect. But the thing was, the only thing bigger than my disappointment in this course is Greg's Ooh. ego. Wow. <laughs> I like, wow. I guess I have a big ego, but I, I don't know. I was, I was hoping that uh, we could have learned something from each other. So, you know, yeah, maybe, okay. maybe I've learned to be a little bit more humble. Well, over the years I, I i think um i think if 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 every single other student said that well then maybe you got to look yourself in the mirror but if it's just uh if it's just one punk um then uh yeah you, it's, it's oh, okay I, to write it up yeah it's okay i mean to write I, it up. I don't i don't hold any ill will other than how did i not connect 
But I'll tell you what, those anonymous feedback forums, people can be venomous in those things. Oh, man. Well, I, I mean, it, I, don't, I don't mind saying because it, it, it is hurtful. I mean, there are people that will speak very negatively uh, about me. And, and I could probably count on one hand how many minutes I've ever been in their presence. And it's, I mean, how, how do you even get to uh, get to this point of opinion about somebody um, where you don't you don't have any, you know, any combination, you know, any any knowledge or, you know, you've never talked to me. Like, how do you even know this? Um, but that's I, I'm going to be OK. I put this one in my back pocket and then I was doing a grad speech for them and I gave all my classic ones like that. And I ended with that, that one. And they, all the students in the room just, oh, I can't believe someone wrote that. And I said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. These weren't really my evaluations. They were my colleagues. And I called out one of my <laughs> colleagues in the room. Man, so I was uh, able to flip it. That's the way, that's the way it goes. It's all, all, yeah. all solved. All right, yeah. man. We'll get back to your, uh, get back to the beer. I'm sure oh, you're man. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, not far. Mark, marking uh, anatomy exams. So I always ask, do you want to be first or last? <laughs> either, e either, either one's got uh, advantages and, and disadvantages. So yeah, that's right. Um, so Martin, next well, week, hey, next week, who are you going to talk to from the Okanagan? Like you're running, out of, <laughs> you no, got to go somewhere else in the world, man. It's all just, it's all just random. It's all just random. <laughs> I, I, uh, um, I have, uh, I have a list, and I don't know. Should I should I make this into a, a a proper podcast? I don't know. I don't care enough. I don't think I like doing this uh, for now and then. Yeah, this I like is, this. I is... like the the low key part of it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Be beers with Charlie. Yeah, energy energy wanted... drinks with Charlie. <laughs> well, the, it, it's usually in the evening. If I even even <laughs> I had an energy drink at this point, it would uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't go too well. So uh, yeah, for. Yeah. for for tomorrow yeah there's uh, limits right yeah oh speaking of tomorrow it's uh we gotta leave oh. so, uh, so ali, uh, ali says you should interview her well she keeps wanting to interview me for she she has a proper she has a proper podcast so um but but i i honestly think it would be well look this isn't my first rodeo i'll make it work but when you talk to somebody all the time it's kind of hard i think what's cool of what i have chosen because we obviously have not talked in length uh, for for a period for a period of time, yeah. so it makes it makes the 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 conversation a little bit different than if you talk all the time. So, right. um, but uh, and we had just the right amount of inside jokes, right? And that's, so, uh, I I don't know. I I I I'm I tried to look at what did what uh how do I how do I catch up with people? You know, how can we kind of talk really freely and openly? and not piss people off, well, then let's not talk about clinical stuff. Hmm. And because look, I mean, look, I, I think, you know, and, and a lot of people that that um, they they know what's going on a little bit behind here. The, the one of the things that that I'm so disappointed in is, is having lost relationships with people that 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 were gained through the through social media, because we're all kind of, you know, we know so many people now. And hmm. and if you if, if you if all you have in common is this kinship of those three letters, uh, the, you know, uh, and then if we don't agree on that anymore because you know, your view went this way and my view went that way and there's nothing else to connect, right, right. It, it really helps to understand relationships where you're allowed to argue, you're allowed to fight, you're allowed to disagree, but if you have no depth in the relationship and you can't talk about anything other then what you like to do as a coach or a therapist, you're yeah. not a friend. You're not a friend. You're a colleague. You might be a really right. good colleague, right. uh, a trusted colleague, but you're not a friend. And what I what I really want to be able to 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 put through here's a little bit of a man behind the curtain. What I'm trying to accomplish is demonstrate that you're not. These people aren't your friends, okay? Because if you can't have a conversation like this with somebody then they're not your friend. Like, I don't care if you accepted their friendship on Facebook. Right. Um, the, 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 you don't know them. And, and if you don't know them, uh, then your relationship should be uh, guarded. It should be gauged. So that way, 
if you don't, it, it wouldn't hurt me that there's people that I don't, well, one person um, that, you know, we don't talk to any, well, I don't talk to me and Patrick don't really talk to anymore for other, for other reasons that have to do with that <laughs> course. But like, there wasn't enough depth to get through that, that, that difficult situation. Right, right, right. And, and, and when you can have a conversation like this for 70 minutes, it shows and, and barely, barely talk about, you know, Shop, yeah. Hot, yeah. But Charlie, tell me about the joint by joint theory. Why is that? I'm like, all right. And I'm going to give you the best answer I could because I'm not going to disrespect the, the person. But I think this is um, um, it, it shows previous evolution. It, we're already there. We're already there. And it's OK. You don't have to be friends with everybody. You, you, you can still have a lot of value um, in it. But, but we need depth. We need depth well, in relationship. I, I choose my friends wise these days is kind of, you know, time is more precious now than ever. And so, you know an hour with somebody is, I mean, I could be upstairs with my daughters, you know, and my wife, Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. so well, it's, I, it's, it's a big, big thing to ask somebody to, to spend time with them now. So it's, it's nice that we got the human side out of it too. Right. So. Yeah. 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 Well, you yeah, know, yeah, I, I think if that's, um, you know, just, just somehow, just being voyeuristic and watching two dudes just talk, and then like maybe pick up a couple of the the jokes. The point is, is that pe people can be known as a messenger of of clinical information, you know, that can help you become better as a coach. But people are people too, and and that that's why I choose to be so prominent in my social media of Transformers and Disney and and those other things because. Uh, yeah, that that does. That's who you are. Bit, yeah, yeah, it does. It does create somewhat of a, a marketing strategy as well. But uh, but but the reality is, is like if, if if you you won't hate me if you don't like what I do as a coach or a therapist because you can connect with me about Disney. Uh, you know, you know what I mean. Something like, else. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm really, uh, and it's not, and it, and it's really not necessarily about me, but rather to show other people that that can that can be like you don't. Like I hate these teams. I, look, I've said these stories, and I don't. I don't. We're, we're talking on a positive lane here, but the, you know, the, some of the negative things of people, dude. Like, they if if you throw sodium pentanol down their throat, they're gonna tell you, yeah, like I'm where I'm at because I followed Charlie, you know, and they they that they that they 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 they've said that before, but because I I you know hold opinions about some clinical things that are completely ridiculous, which they all now also threw out the window because I was right. And I usually am um, the, the, you know, harassing phone calls and, and uh, you know, really some, some distressful things. And, and look, you know, I, I'd be happy to handle it in a different way, you know, collegiate level wrestling skills and, and a black belt in Taekwondo. We, we can see how we can handle that if, if you'd like to, but, um, uh, but it, I, I don't want that to, I, I, I'm trying to fix my mistakes. You know, if, if I, if I did contribute to that discord, well, I'm going to fix it by demonstrating that people can talk about things other than training. And if you don't agree about training, it's cool too. Like that's, that's, uh, yeah. you can, it, you, but you have to have other things. You have to have ice cream. You have to have stories about Sacramento. You have to have, uh, uh, Ogopogo, uh, cause who doesn't like Ogopogo? So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what makes it enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, right. we love Let to work. Hear. We just can't work all the time. I got you. So. Um, I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make sure you guys have some ice cream up there to go along with uh, the the beer and the skiing. And uh, absolutely, and we, will, we, will see, we will see you soon. Yeah, man. Keep my best. All right, man, be too. Well. Okay. Yes, sir. Talk to you soon. Talk bye -bye. soon.